I met Joanna briefly. She was seeing my brother Randall at the time. Quentin met her and fell in love with her and took her away from Randall. He then asked me for a divorce. Of course, I said no. I thought that was the end of the affair. You know, he went away to see, to forget about her, but I knew that he wouldn't. What I didn't know was that his leaving would affect her in such a strange way. How did it affect her? It made her live in a complete fantasy world. She was trying to recreate the life she had with Quentin. Eventually, they sent her to an asylum. The authorities got so alarmed by her deterioration that they got in touch with Quentin here. That's how I found out where she was. I decided that I was going to go and see her. I knew that she had freedom of the grounds, and I saw her one day, standing there. Nobody saw us. You're the first person who knows about this visit. It's been a secret until this moment. Why did you go see her? I wanted to know what it was that was destroying my marriage. She talked at great length. When I learned of the passion that she and Quentin had experienced it made me hate him even more. There had been love there. The kind of love that Quentin never showed me. After that, I heard that she was escaped from the asylum. And a week after that, her body washed ashore on some beach. Since Quentin was the only one that ever meant that she ever mentioned, all her belongings and effects were sent here. I've had them locked in a closet upstairs ever since. And that's how you received the possession of the notes? Yes. She was writing in the asylum to Quentin, convinced that somehow her letters would bring him back. But tell me, how did Daphne and Quentin come into this position so easily? Well, at first I used her letters. And then I began to copy her handwriting. And then I could say anything I wanted. At first, I merely wanted to torture him a little. And then when Daphne came here and I realized that she was Joanna's sister, I knew that I had to go farther. I knew that I had to drive her from this house. Wait a minute. Daphne is Joanna's sister? Yes. Of course, that's why she had the pistol. What pistol? I, when I first met her, she was carrying a pistol in her purse. I asked her about it and she explained to me. And I believed her. I don't understand. <laughs> what? How ironic it all is. How incredibly beautiful it is. She came here to avenge her sister's death by murdering Quentin. And if it wasn't for you, she might have done it. I don't know what you mean. The notes, my dear. You sending her the notes merely brought Quentin and Daphne closer together. She will never murder him now. Well, perhaps that's just as well. Dying that way is too good for him. I'd rather see him beheaded. That's a fitting end to Mr. Quentin Collins. Have you always hated him this deeply? He was responsible for ruining any happiness that I might have had. Well, you still have a chance. What do you mean? Did it ever occur to you that I was forced into treating you like I did when you had to choose between Quentin and me? I don't believe you that. You must believe it because it is true. Samantha, I knew there wouldn't be any chance between you and me if Quentin were still around. You must understand. You must believe me. It's the truth. We could have a new life together. Well, I would believe you if you would help me get Daphne out of this house. It's impossible. Why? Because you love her? No. Because I want you to write more letters. You see, 
Quentin will lose everything. And his faith in the letters will disappear if he finds out Daphne is out of the house. So we must keep her here. And then we will put the final touches on Quentin Collins. They will both be gone. And only you and I will remain. I don't mind telling you, Gerard. I haven't slept very well ever since your encounter with Barnabas Collins that day. I'm haunted by the ordeal that my poor father must have gone through. Gerard, your mind seems to be somewhere else at the moment. I trust I'm not boring you. No, not at all, Trask. I'm sorry. I, I understand your feelings. Well, the fact is I've resigned myself to the reality that we will never get Barnabas Collins by legal means. The man is far too clever. But I do have a way of dealing with him. Oh? How? I'll need your help. Of course. I'll be happy to help. Barnabas Collins will be at Rose Cottage this evening. Yes, I know. Flora has invited me with several other people for dinner. Yes, I'm aware of that. I want it to be known to Barnabas Collins that for the past three nights at midnight, the spirit of Roxanne Drew has appeared to me in the cellar of the Trask Chapel. Now, she has not spoken as yet, but I have reason to believe that she will tonight. Do you see that he gets this information? Of course I will. But you must remember, I called Barnabas a vampire. And he's been suspicious of me ever since. So I will have Flora tell him. Thank you, Gerard. But Trask, I do hope you're not going to keep me in suspense. What do you plan to do with Barnabas? I believe it is the holy obligation of a son to avenge his father's death even if that act of vengeance must be carried into the second generation. It was a lovely dinner, Flora. Thank you, Barnes. Yes. Flora has no peer as a hostess here, so I asked her to serve in that capacity at Collinwood. That was very dear of you, Gerard. And now, if you will excuse me, I have some work to do. Well, of course. Go right ahead. Good night. I wanted a chance to talk with Barnes anyway. <laughs> Barnabas, dear, I, I feel I must explain why I'm so insistent on your coming here tonight. It's because I feel guilty. About what? Well, I began to have strong suspicions about you after we held the seance to contact Roxanne. If you remember, you broke contact during the seance, just as Roxanne was telling us the name of the one who made her a vampire. She said it was Angelique. And I had the feeling that you did it deliberately because you knew more about Ra Ra Roxanne's death than you cared to admit. Well, if you recall, I told you that my mother's name was, Ro was Angelique. Yes, I know. And then Gerard and Lamar came to see me, and we discussed the dreadful events of, of 1797. And, well, we all thought that it was possible that you were responsible for the death of Roxanne, that you were indeed the vampire. Now you know that's not true. Yes, I can't tell you how ashamed I am. And I hope you won't hold it against the others. I only wish the whole thing hadn't such, had such a terrible effect on poor Lamar. What do you mean? Well, quite frankly, Barnabas, he hasn't been the same since. He's become quite bitter, and now he's having this curious experience with the spirit of Roxanne. What are you talking about? For the past three nights, Lamar has actually seen the spirit of Roxanne in the basement of his chapel. Perhaps, perhaps he's only imagined that he's seen it. You no, know, if you could talk to him, you'd know it was not his imagination. Now, I'm quite sure that she does appear just as he says, each night at midnight. Did she speak to him? Not yet. Oh, how I wish I could speak to her. But he won't let me go there to see her. He won't even go himself anymore. He says it's too dangerous. But I'm not afraid. She went to her grave with a great secret. I'd give anything to learn it. So would I. Well, if you'll excuse me, Flora, but it's getting terribly late and I have a lot to do in the morning. And won't you stay for brandy? Uh, thank you so much, but uh, I must be getting back to the old house. Oh, thank you so much for a lovely dinner. The pleasure's been mine. Good night. Good night.
Roxanne. My father's death must be avenged. Roxanne, are you here? You must appear to me, Roxanne. I must talk to you. She is not here, Mr. Collins, and she won't be here. So it was a trap. Yes. Carefully conceived and executed. We're all alone, Mr. Collins. I've waited a long time for this moment. Why did you want me to come here? Well, I shouldn't think you'd have to ask that question. But if you really need an explanation, I suggest you look carefully at the far wall. My father's death must be avenged, Mr. Collins, and you are the one who must pay. I think it only fitting that you should die the same way he did, sealed up behind a brick wall. Do you really expect to get away with something like this? Consider how long my father's tomb went undetected. Now move, Mr. Collins, into that alcove. And if you're thinking of escape, I warn you, I am prepared to use this pistol. You know, for a while, I was really convinced that you were a vampire. But now I'm glad that you're human, Mr. Collins. As human as my father was. It makes my revenge so much more complete. So much more fulfilling. Now, put on the manacles, Mr. Collins. The manacles, if you please. Almost finished, Mr. Collins. You're insane. You'll never get away with a thing like this. Your pleas will fall on deaf ears, just as my father's did in the cellar of the old house. My wife and my sister, they will not rest until they find me. No one is going to find you, Mr. Collins, at least not for a long, long time. My own father's remains were not found for over 40 years. How long do you think he was able to survive without food and water? Trask, this will not be the last time you'll see my face. You'll see me again. <laughs> After this brick is in place, Mr. Collins, no one will ever see you again or hear you. These walls are thick. Your cries will not be heard. You know, it is a sense of triumph to me that I am not only avenging my father's death, but I am preventing you from testifying in behalf of the heretic Quentin Collins. Now, Mr. Collins, goodbye. Hi. Good morning, Julia. Don't pretend we're friends, Gerard. We both know you tried to kill Barnabas yesterday. I will be civil to you when people are around, but that is all. My, my, what a temper you have. It matches the color of your red hair. Tell me, 
Are you looking for your brother? Yes, have you seen him? Wasn't he supposed to be in court today? Yes. Well, perhaps he's started for the village earlier. No. No, he was to wait at the old house, and then we were to leave for the village together. I went to the old house, but he wasn't there. Valerie hadn't seen him since last night. How strange. Not very strange. He might very well have gone for a walk early this morning. Of course. But then why are you so uneasy? Should I be uneasy? Not as far as I'm concerned. If I see Barnabas, shall I tell him that you're looking for him? If you see him, I doubt very much if he'll talk to you. But you could tell him that I've gone to see Quentin in the village. Good morning, Miss Collins. Good morning. I gather she's unable to find her brother. That is right. Well, I can appreciate her concern for a missing loved one, can't you? What do you mean? But then, of course, he's only been missing for one day. Wait until the days stretch into years. Then she'll know how I felt. Trask, what are you trying to tell me? Nothing, nothing at all. And what do you mean the days will turn into years? Oh, just a, just a feeling I have, that's You all. know where Boniface is. Now, what have you done with him? Gerard, do you really think I'd do anything to harm Barnabas Collins? Didn't you tell me that he was not guilty of vampirism as we suspected? Didn't you see him in the light of day? Yes, I did. Well then, do you really think I would do anything to harm an innocent man? What have you done to him, Trask? Let me put it this way, my friend. Whatever fate has befallen Barnabas Collins, I'm certain was well deserved. But I suspect that we may have seen and heard the last of him. <laughs> 